I'm coming guys. It's moving a little slow. Ah. Oh. Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this lovely Friday, March 18th, 2022. So as some of you are aware, I came within one inch of killing myself yesterday with a chainsaw, ironically enough, getting a taste of karma. But uh, anyway, my leg is pretty mangled and uh, I am not in good shape. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, I'm just throwing it out there. Do, does anybody out there have one of those little old point-and-shoot cameras that preceded cell phones lying around in a desk drawer or something? My camera is about to collapse. And uh, if anybody has, you know, like I have one of these little Canon point-and-shoots. If you just happen to have one of those... Uh, I could really use the donation to Collapse Chronicles. I don't know when I'm going to lose this camera. Could be this ramp. But anyway, with those announcements, uh, since it is Friday, time for what I do every Friday, and that is my Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant, where we check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls uh, at mongabay.com to find, good lord, an overflowing uh, cavalcade of catastrophe this week. Don't think you ever see the word Ukraine in it. But anyway, there's a lot of this. I am in, I am hurt and bad. I have to put a new ice pack on, and so I don't know how many of these I'll get to. Wow, you will not believe this one. <clears throat> Amazon deforestation starts 2022 on the fastest pace in 14 years. Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon is off to its fastest pace to start a year since at least 2008. According to the Brazilian government's own data, which means it's worse than this. Forest clearing in the Amazon in January and February amounted to 430 square kilometers, otherwise known as 166 square miles of the Amazon rainforest obliterated off the planet in January and February. That is more than twice the average of the past 10 years. The torrid, the torrid start of the year suggests the Brazilian government is failing to rein in deforestation. Hmm. After a high profile pledge to do so at the UN climate talks in Glasgow, the bad news came just days after a new study published in Nature Climate Change provided more evidence that the ecological function of Earth's largest rainforest is diminishing. It is diminishing and accelerating to the highest pace ever. And you can do... Uh, connect your own dots between that story and this one right next to it. Tropical deforestation emitting far more carbon than previously thought. This is our worse than previously thought story of the day. Carbon emissions due to tropical deforestation are accelerating. A new study is found using detailed maps of forest chains and blah, blah, blah. The researchers demonstrated that annual emissions more than doubled, more than doubled between 2015 and 2019 compared to 20 to 2001 to 2005. There you go. Uh, 
study reveals that the world has not met its commitments to stem deforestation. Hmm. Let's go over to the Congo rainforest, which will not be on the planet in 30 more years. Wow. Conflict in Cameroon. Well, I guess this is the Western Sub-Saharan. Uh, civil conflict in Cameroon puts endangered chimpanzees in the crosshairs. Declared a national park. Yes, 13 years ago, Mount Cameroon hosts an array of biodiversity, including endangered chimpanzees. As efforts to protect the area have been complicated by an armed conflict that has displaced hundreds of thousands of people and pushed both refugees and armed combatants deeper into the area's forest inside the National Park. The conflict, as they keep calling it, compounds existing conservation challenges, including population pressure, land clearing and conversion, demand for bushmeat, can you say chimpanzee in the stew pot, and weak law enforcement. There you go. So that's what the national parks inside the rain right rainforest in Cameroon look like. Alright guys, I'm just there is so much here. I'm just gonna briefly touch on uh, some of these. Here is this article. I read a whole book about these little guys, these tree kangaroos in New Guinea, uh, about how screwed they are. Uh, looking at this new road going through, I guess, the last home to the critically endangered Ten Kyle tree kangaroo. Yes. Yes, those tree kangaroos. Uh, I'm glad there's no tree kangaroos in those trees I was cutting down yesterday, almost killing me. Uh, okay, here we go. This is uh, Manga Bay on Bright Green Lies. Did you realize that climate positive, climate positive, High-tech metals are polluting our planet? Yes. Green energy technology growth, especially wind, solar, hydropower, and electric vehicles, is crucial. Is crucial. Yes, if the world is to meet the Paris Climate Agreement goals. Yes. But these green solutions rely on technology critical elements whose production and disposal can be environmentally harmful. Yes, mining and processing of all of these, you know, save the planet from fossil fuels materials, mining and processing requires huge amounts of energy. Mines use gigantic quantities of fresh water can drive large-scale land use change and pollute the air, soil, and water, threatening biodiversity. And then, of course, they also become pollutants themselves when they are disposed as waste. Yes, we know relatively little about what happens to them after manufacture and disposal. Yep, yep, yep. Save the planet from fossil fuels. Uh, I, I love these Amazon Indians wielding drones and cell phones to stop the planet eaters. 
did you realize that elephants are far better off in the forest than in a zoo? Hmm. Never thought of that before. Uh, well, we just heard about the those uh, Amazon Indians using drones and cell phones. I like these guys better. The in Brazil, indigenous Kapoor take their territory's defense into their own hands, which is exactly what the planet eaters want them to do. Yes. Uh, the I guess it's Kapoor people have taken the defense of their land into their own hands following years of neglect and corruption. They have created a self-defense force to take logging sites and access roads from illegal loggers. All right, so far they have burned 105 logging trucks and closed 14 access roads. But the illegal loggers, you, you know, whose trucks they're burning down, but the illegal loggers who are part of criminal organizations linked to local politicians have reacted with violence react, resulting in attacks on villages and the murder of two of these guys. And uh, I've been saying all along uh, that is exactly what the planet eaters want is for these Indians to put a, you know, a bow and arrow through one of them. Uh, this gives the planet eaters carte blanche to kill the, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, logging truck here. Anyway, I think we know who's going to win that one. Okay, we were talking about supply chains yesterday and uh, so now they're talking about you know, what we're just talking about the technology critical elements asking the question can the technology critical element supply chain become sustainable a green tech issue the answer to the question, which we just learned the answer to in that last story, can the Save the Planet green technology supply chain become sustainable? The answer is no, it cannot. All right, we have a marathon effort to restore mangroves in Puerto Rico. Yes, you go for it. Uh, there we go. Fate of Indonesian rainforest the size of Belgium hangs in the balance. We've uh, talked about this. So here is the question waiting to be answered. With the sudden announcement of a mass revocation of plantation permits in Indonesia, did Indonesia just save a forest the size of Belgium? Or did it open the floodgates for its destruction? I think we all know the answer. It opened the floodgates for its destruction. A forest the size of Belgium. You know, I've mentioned this, that they got their permits revoked because they were not moving quickly enough to destroy the forest. That is why the government rescinded their permits, is because they weren't raping and pillaging fast enough for the corrupt politicians. Do your own math. All right. Now we're going to go over to the Democratic Republic of the Congo where we see the question, and we all know the answer, 
can a reforestation project stop land grabbing? If you do not know the answer to the question, can a reforestation project stop land grabbing? Uh, obviously, we have had a failure to communicate for the last 10 years. All right, good Lord, guys. I am one third. Uh, okay, another question. Can, now you might be surprised by my answer to this, can we plan for a future without trophy hunting? Mainly talking about, you know, the big seven game animals in sub-Saharan Africa. So this is a little bit of a trick question. If you thought I was going to answer that question, no, is yes, we certainly can. We're virtually guaranteed a future without trophy hunting, at least with uh, you know the big seven in sub-Saharan Africa, when there are no more animals left to trophy hunt, when there are no more trophy animals left that will be the end of trophy hunting. I was talking about this very subject last week. Had a lot of articles to solve a lot of problems. The way to end trophy hunting on this planet, there's two ways. One is to kill every single trophy animal on the planet, which is what, and make them extinct, which is what we are going to do. Or the flip side of that is make humans extinct which we're also going to do, but by the time we make humans extinct, all those trophy hunting animals are already going to be extinct. In case anyone did not understand that. Here is about human and bear encounters in Nepal. Guess who's gonna win that conflict? Uh, good Lord, uh, Brazilian Congress fast tracks, fast tracks death package bill to mine on indigenous lands. Yes, thousands of protesters, including celebrities, activists and 150 indigenous people themselves from eight ethnic groups gathered for the single biggest environmental protest ever held in Brazil's capital against a series of bills dubbed the death package by critics. Yes. Uh, so what do you think with the biggest environmental protest in, in Brazilian history going on outside while the protests were taking place, the lower house of Congress was voting to fast track one of those bills, which would allow mining on indigenous lands, an activity that is banned under Brazil's constitution. Yes, and of course, the legislation enjoys the support of President Bozo Nero and the powerful agribusiness lobby. There you go. Uh, all right, here's the never ending battle on the European Union, you know, talking about saving the planet from fossil fuels by burning forest and this BS biofuels. Uh, you will not believe that luxury, the luxury wood market is driving the extinction of rare trees. This is particularly looking at the IPA IPA tree. Demand for wood from IPA trees in the Amazon Basin could lead 
to their extinction soon. Yes, they are in high demand for the luxury timber market. Yep, yep, yep. You can kiss goodbye the Ipe tree. Uh, and here is the story about the star tortoise. This latest tortoise you can kiss goodbye to. I don't know if you've if you've never heard this before. Manga Bay is reminding us there is no planet B. Yes, groups call for sixty billion dollars increase in annual biodiversity funding. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Good luck on that. Let's throw more money at it. Uh, did you know there were coral reefs in Antarctica? Uh, I did not realize that corals lived in Antarctica. Uh, but take a wild guess. They're going the way of any other coral. Going on in Ecuador, gold rush in Ecuador's Amazon threatens 1,500 communities. There you go. Oh boy. Anyway, guys, I am. Uh, Anyway, guys, I'm hurting. I gotta go get some pain pills, and this is uh, this is hurting me more to read. I think we get it, Rat. We get it. Anyway, guys, I could go on with this, but uh, I've gotta go put some ice on my knee and elevate my foot. Bye guys. Well, dog, I don't think I can get out of the chair.